Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Or welcome to, I don't know, I never know. Hi, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make the Posh Trio Makeup Bag by Needle and Anchor Patterns. Um, so cute. <laughs> I literally can't decide which style, which size is my favorite, but that's a good thing because it's a trio, right? Um, so this one, of course, is the large size. It is uh, about a nine inch base by four inches. Huge, amazing size. You can make one or two or all three, it's totally up to you, but they nest inside of each other. It's so cool. So there is the medium size. Again, super cute. Me and Ben can't decide which one our favorite is. What are you doing? Whatever. Okay, so we open this one up and then we have the small size. So they're so cute. Again, I can't even um, this small size is really great for um, small things. I actually brought down a very small amount of my lipsticks because I could just see them fitting perfectly in here, and they do. And even you could lay them flat even. They're the perfect width and just fill that up. Um, this medium size is great for toothbrushes, um, travel size accessories. I actually brought some of my favorite liquid products to throw in here. You could even stick this back in there if you wanted to smash it down. And then this big guy is great for palettes. I only brought two of the several that I have um, just to kind of show how large this is. Amazing can fit so much stuff in here. So if I needed to travel with a lot of things, you could even put shampoo bottles in here, etc. Totally awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about the changes that I made to the pattern. There were only a few. Um, it's a great pattern written for, um, geared towards beginners, I should say, because there is a great amount of detail that she puts into the pattern, and I love that. Um, so the first one, as you'll see, we made pretty close to the pattern instructions. We didn't sew through the lining, which when you're working with waterproof canvas is something that you would want to do just to keep it out of the way. Kind of like this one, you can see the difference, how the lining sits. Um, I also did not add fleece to the pattern or the Peltex, but if you're using quilting cottons to make yours, that's definitely something you'd wanna do. It would give it a nice amount of body and help protect the items in your bag. Um, the way I interfaced mine was with Woven Fuse or SF-101 and Decoville Light. One layer of each, just on the main body pieces. This up here is leather, so I did not add any interfacing, um, but I would say that you would want to at least add Woven Fuse if you were going to make it with quilting cottons. Um, even adding Decoville Light would be nice or something to that effect. Um, I know she says you can add foam to it and that would give it so much body, but I didn't want that puffiness. That's, that's me. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much the only change. I didn't add zipper tabs just because I'm lazy and I don't like zipper tabs, but when you're using zipper by the yard, you would definitely need to add zipper tabs. Um, I know what Ben wants. So Carissa from Needle and Anchor actually is gonna give away one of her patterns and Ben wanted to tell you about that so if you just comment down below that you would like to win one of the patterns you'll be entered to win as long as you're watching this video before January 4th of 2019 oh my god it's 2019 I cannot believe it can you believe it anyway so yeah thank you so much to Carissa for donating that and I hope you guys enjoy watching this video Ben is there anything else you wanted to tell them He's making sure you subscribe. Are you gonna tell him? Yeah, he says please subscribe. Okay, enjoy the video. So I'm just getting done cutting out the exterior for the Posh Makeup Bag Trio that we're about to do a tutorial on. I was gonna put some fabric away and my cat scared the crap out of me. Hi, Connor. 
that was terrifying. All right, you guys, we have all of our pieces here ready to go. Ben is in position, as is Connor. Say hi, guys. No? Okay. Um, one tool that really will come in handy when you guys are doing this is this uh, two and a half inch square from OmniGrid. I have it marked off at one and a half inch uh, just for when I make totes, but I was able to mark all my pieces with that. Um, and I've got a pile of goods ready to go. So let's do this. All right, so we are going to start by making the small size. And these are all pretty much made the exact same way. So that makes life a little easier. You grab my line pieces and you need a nine inch zipper. Um, I went ahead and omitted the zipper tabs just because I don't normally use them. Um, and since these are finished zippers, it's not zipper by the yard, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm gonna start by snipping the centers of all of my pieces. This is not in the pattern, but it's something I like to do. Just really, really small snips. Um, as stated in the intro to this video as well, we changed up the interfacing some. Um, I used Woven Fuse in Decoville on the exterior main panel pieces. Um, except on the leather that I'm using at the top portion. And since I'm using waterproof canvas for the lining, I went ahead and omitted interfacing in it all together. Um, the way Carissa has written this pattern is really easy to understand. Um, it's also very thorough and it's great for beginners. So if you guys are thinking about buying something I mean, this pattern is awesome. I'm sure I said all this in the intro too, but anyway, so I'm just slowly clipping this piece around the top and there's this little helpful notch cut into this piece and you wanna line that up with the side of your panel as best as you can. That's gonna be a, a seam guide essentially. Um, so I'm just using these clips all the way around And I'm gonna go ahead and clip the other one while I'm here. Um, this took me about, um, I would say, total going slowly an hour to cut and interface all three of these as well as collect the materials I needed and FaceTime with my sister. So there's that. Um, this is a great like, oh, crap, we're going to a party and I need a gift, like done. I've seen so many people make these within the sewing groups and I'm like, oh, I wanna try those. That looks such a, it's such a cute, quick pattern, but like also a very unexpected finish. So um, it's a three eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'm gonna start at that notch. I'm gonna keep my stitch length to four, back stitch there and just go nice and slow. You want to make sure that there's no puckering or anything like that. Try and keep your seam allowance consistent. I'm just going to keep it going. And if your seams kind of start to get off filter or anything like that, just kind of push them back into place. All right. Ben so far is into it. <laughs> um, and then she just pushes that fabric up and top stitches. Wait, what does she do? Honestly, um, you, can, you can clip this, you could flip it down and then the kind of lip of your fabric is on your fabric side, but I always like to top stitch on the vinyl, so I'm going to fold my leather up, plus this will kind of help reinforce that seam, so I'm just gonna keep this flat facing up and pull my vinyl up, and then I'm gonna top stitch on that vinyl. 
leather. I'm using leather, I keep forgetting. So I'm gonna switch my stitch length to a 4.5 and I'm gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge. This is really, really thin leather. I got it um, at Tandy's Black Friday sale. And it's like an onyx black. It's, it's the only color I could think to use that would kind of unify all these prints that I grabbed. <laughs> I just wanted to use all my favorite cat prints. What can I say? So again, I'm just top stitching away from the edge. I did not fold down my seam. Okay, so there's that part. And now we can go ahead and add our zipper. Um, you kind of want to decide what you want to be the front. I'm going to go with this one. Uh, since I'm not using zipper tabs or anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and fold my zipper in half, make little tiny itty bitty snips, and I'm going to lay that centering it with the snip here. I'm gonna grab some other clips. Ben, you're being so freaking adorable right now. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold beginning and end of my zipper tape at 90 degree angle. And then since this zipper is a little bit longer than we need it to be, we're just gonna fold it off at a 90 degree angle and you wanna be about 3 eighths of an inch from the edge. So actually, skip that on centering it. I'm just gonna line the edge of the end about a half inch from the edge. Because if your zipper is within the seam allowance, it's going to get kind of bunchy and weird. But not a big deal. Okay. Um, so you might even get away with using like a 7 inch zipper if you don't feel like trimming off any excess on the small size anyway. So now that I've got my zipper set up, I'm just gonna baste it in place. Keeping that folded out of the seam allowance. And basting about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And make sure that your zipper doesn't get all wiggly. grab one of our lining pieces and lay that face down um, something I thought of while I was cutting this out is you could even put together all of your exterior pieces and then go through and cut your lining pieces uh, just by laying this down and laying it on top and then just quickly cutting out um, especially if you're making a ton of these at once uh, because I could see for a show maybe doing like a bunch of prints that coordinate but not necessarily that people have to buy them together and doing like a package deal like if you buy all three you get five percent off or something like that people would probably be really excited okay so for the next part um, she says to only top stitch your zipper. You're not going to top stitch your lining. So she kind of, she has really great photos and she pulls the lining in the exterior part and just top stitches along the outside. But another thing that you could do is push it all together and iron it down. And then only top stitch along your zipper. That's something that I've done with uh, like the Freesia fold over, which is a very similar curve. But we are gonna try it the way she says to. 
she recommends, I should say. So we're gonna keep it curved. You can kind of see how I'm holding it. And we're just gonna top stitch along the entire top. So my stitch length is still set to 4.5. And I'm gonna go about an eighth of an inch from the top edge, do a little back stitch, and then just slowly kind of pull these layers apart without wrinkling my leather. Go a little slower. And then make sure you're stitching through that seam too, because that's gonna give it a little extra bulk. is done. We've got this nearly there. I love the way this looks so far. So excited. Okay, so we're going to grab the other side. Make sure to line up these sides. And then I slowly move the pieces together. Turn my zipper piece away. And then just again, slowly clip your zipper. You can see it kind of already has that curved shape. So that's pretty nice. And then we'll trail off that zipper. And baste stitch it on. Just an eighth of an inch from the edge. Make sure with the waterproof canvas, if you're using it, that you want the um, side with a little bit of texture. That's the right side of your fabric. So you want to make sure you can see that from the inside of your bag. Okay, so again, we're only going to be top stitching through the exterior on this one. So my lining pieces are all facing in the opposite direction as this one exterior piece. So I'm just gonna get it started and then kind of separate these layers. Make sure your zipper is out of the way. And you wanna make sure you're stitching through that seam. Excess threads. Oh my gosh, it's so cute so far. I'm so excited. All right, I'm gonna quickly unzip and I'm going to cut away my one inch square. You could definitely do this before you, you know, get everything ready. I just wanted to wait and I'm actually going to. throw these darn scissors away, lay these together and clip it so that my lining is the exact size it needs to be. I need to add a nameplate too. This is going to be my front. Um, so the measurement for the corner of the small size is in the pattern. It's one inch. Um, and I 
just love the idea of these nesting. I always see them at stores around Christmas time. I'm like, that's such a cute idea. Nesting cosmetic bags. You could even add little slip pockets to this pattern or you could add a zippered pocket. You could also cut out just the lining for both the exterior and the interior. You could just cut out the lining piece and skip doing the um, fun little accent. You know, there's all kinds of possibilities. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this in half make a center crease and add a little nameplate. Little, I said little. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go an inch from the bottom. Use my seam ripper. Make sure my nameplate's facing right side up. Oh, so cute. All right, so now we're gonna put all of our pieces together. Clip. Uh, I feel like one of the most important pieces you want to make sure is lined up properly is that accent panel. So I'm starting with the top, the zipper, and then lining up those accent pieces nicely, clipping accent pieces, clipping. So we're gonna start inside the lining with a little bit wider of a seam allowance. I'm gonna start pretty close to the bottom edge. So the standard seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch and we're just going to kind of go a little bit wider and then as we work our way to the top, we're going to kind of keep it consistent. We're getting close to the zipper, so I'm gonna keep my needle in the fabric and pivot out since this does kind of taper. I'm gonna backstitch along the accent panel to reinforce that. Just go straight down to the bottom. You can like pick up your needle and trim. I just leave it connected, I think it's easier. I am gonna trim my zipper tails since this leather is so thin. Backstitch of the accent piece, getting close to the zipper, so I'm going to leave my needle in and pivot. Backstitch to reinforce, and then again, kind of increase your seam allowance a little bit. And then leave a decent sized opening. Okay. And now you can trim your seam allowance. I'm gonna leave my seam allowance thicker at the top. Um, well, actually, no, I have to trim that. I am not going to trim the bottom of my lining because we'll need to stitch that closed still. Square the corners. We're going to unzip it and clip those corners together. They should line up nicely. Open up the seam. Add a clip. Um, the pattern does say you can add stabilizers, so if you really want the bottom of your bag 
to be nice and tight. You can follow the pattern for directions for that. Um, because of the interfacings I used, I know that it'll be able to stand up on its own. I used uh, SF101 or Woven Fuse and Decoville Light. So now I'm just gonna freeze an inch along the bottom. And I'm actually just gonna do one right after the other and then trim it. Because these are all sewn the same exact way, you can easily um, do what they call um, assembly line style make these. So you would add all the accent pieces and then you would sew all the corners, things like that, and just move it right along. trim all the excess seam allowance along those bottom corners. I really haven't needed my iron very much. And then we're going to pull it through the opening in the bottom and close it up. out those bottom corners oh my gosh it's so stinking cute and then push out the side corners too I just use my thumb very gently you don't want to push too hard and then I just kind of wiggle this you can use your iron to steam this. I'm just gonna close up the bottom. And then that waterproof canvas is gonna give it another layer of stability. Oh my God, it's so cute. I think I'm gonna use these to store like my lipsticks, things like that. Um, and now if you need to, you can take your iron and press it. Um, but because of that Decoville light, there really isn't much pressing needed. Kind of square the bottom off. And there is the small size all done. This looks really wrinkly. That's just the nature of the leather. But so, so cute. Now we're gonna make the medium size together. Uh, we definitely don't have to. The small size is enough. You get the gist. But I am Actually, I'm gonna make these all at once, just so I can assembly line style it and get it done a little faster. They are so cute, I can't stand it. So I'm gonna fold all of these into the center. These are a great size to um, add embroidery to, or if um, you had a favorite t-shirt that no longer fit or something like that, a great way to keep it alive for longer is to turn it into a bag. 
These were actually all leggings that I purchased and loved and now I'm like, am I really gonna wear these? So that's why I'm turning them into makeup bags. Okay. So these are all the large size, that's a medium. So we're just at first lining up those center snips as we discussed in the intro. Um, yeah, I don't think I would really change anything uh, in the original directions. Um, I like the way it came together. Carissa did a great job and I'm excited to make more of her patterns, honestly. When you assembly line style, make sure that nothing is under your sewing machine before you start sewing. <laughs> or under your project. Her pattern is definitely more in detail than I have been going, so I apologize if I'm not following it exactly. I think most of you, if you've been here a while, know that I'm not good at following anything. Some of you may like that, some of you may not. I can't change. find you're having trouble attaching the accent top piece, you could always um, add little snips to it. Um, you, could, you could add snips along your curve just so that it sits nicely. Uh, one thing that I thought about was adding piping to this seam as well. It would look so cute. Um, I don't have any piping ready to go for this, or I would, um, but I would love to hear if you guys have added piping, or if you watch this video and now you're like, well, I'm definitely adding piping, now that you've said that. If you are noticing that these pieces don't line up perfectly together, it's because I cut them on a fold of leather and I wasn't being extremely precise, uh, mostly because I knew they were for me and I, I just don't care. I don't mind. I'll make up for it. If there's one thing I'm not, it is a perfectionist. <laughs> So now I'm going to switch my stitch length to a 4.5 and we are going to top stitch these beautiful babies. Again, um, she says you can fold the, the pouch seam down and top stitch on your fabric, but I like the top stitch on my accent piece, so I am not doing anything with it. Just going to fold. Uh, 
Uh, you could even add two rows of stitching. That would be super duper cute. You could add one here and add another one above that. I could see this large size being a really cute handbag too if you added some kind of handles something of that nature some really cute shapes Now I'm ready to add my zippers. Uh, this is the only zipper I could find in the length I needed. Oh, well, actually, I guess I could trail it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my zipper color. I wanted to use a hot pink one really bad. I mean, let's be real, it's for me. If your zipper is too long, you can absolutely, of course, use a zipper tab. I just, I'm lazy, I'm gonna be honest. I don't love zipper tabs. So, I'm just gonna clip my zipper around and do what we did on the small size and trail it off. eighth of an inch top stitch basting stitch I should say mm -hmm. okay there's that one. Oh, I definitely want this to be the front <laughs> oh sorry Ben Starting at the bottom. So used to centering my zippers, this feels so strange. Okay. Unzip this. Turn it at a 90 degree angle right there. Luckily, these are um, different enough sizes that you wouldn't get anything mixed up, too. I did kind of have a worry about that. Okay, I've got that clipped. Next size. Clipped it away. Flip them over and then we can come in about an eighth of an inch from our basting stitch line. And just make sure that your zipper pull isn't in the way and that your zipper tape is laying nice and flat. Oh, 
go ahead and honestly, I'm going to cut my lining right now. Cut my squares. So now, um, I don't know, I don't know. I think I'm going to try the medium size and I'm going to stitch, I'm going to stitch through the lining, but I'm only going to stitch from the start of my zipper to the end of my zipper. So I'm going to back stitch a few times. I'm just going to pull my lining and my exterior together and go through that zipper tape just to see how I like it because this is how I would normally do it okay and then when you get to the end of your zipper you just back stitch Sometimes you want your lining to keep out of your zipper. Okay. And then, uh, I don't know. Do I want to do it with the medium size and the large size? I feel like I definitely want to do it on the large size. So if you're doing it this way, what you'll want to do is press it from the lining side as well. All right, Bobbin, get me through this, and then I will change it. Back stitch, back stitch, back stitch. Bobbin, also one. When your bobbin runs out at the perfect time, you both win. That's a good sewing night. I always make a joke like the sewing gods have smiled upon me. Benjamin is looking at me like, are you about done messing with my bed? Please, woman. Lady. Okay. Lining up the sides. I want it to sit nicely. I'm going to bring it up. my zipper out of 90 degree angle
forgot to cut my squares all at once. Oh goodness gracious, Benjamin. that up fix it because we we're gonna go over that again anyway Zipping it is going to help you line that up. I always like to sew from the same direction for some reason, even if it makes my life a little bit harder. I don't know why. All right, starting at the end of my zipper, I stitch a few times. And just make sure you're pulling your zipper out slightly, laying that seam nice and flat. So this one is almost done. I'm gonna cut away those lining square or the squares. And you could cut your squares out um, before you mark them. You could actually cut them. No, you could mark them out when you have all your fabric pieces together instead of making it a little bit harder like I'm doing. larger nameplates on the large size and I'll probably put another small nameplate on the small size or the medium size that or none at all okay that's my front from the bottom under that and this is um, just a marking pen from Tandy leather these are great they wipe away really nicely so they're my favorite for making little marks Make sure it's facing up Ugh, yes. So cute. Sorry, Ben. Sorry. All right. Now we're ready to top stitch this side. 
Oh no, this one might be my favorite. Oh, it's so cute. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and add a nameplate just in case. And then I have to cut these corners out. Good way. Don't forget it. You'll regret it. Um, these nameplates I ordered from a man named Bruce from Alibaba. Um, I don't have the link, but a lot of people have talked it in the sewing group that I run, so whatever. So if you want more information, please feel free to join or just look him up. It's Bruce and Alibaba. Um, these are okay, and make sure that you ask for washers because the very first time I ordered with him, he did not include them. They fell off a lot of bags, and I was very upset. Um, but the ones that I sell through my website are actually astronomically better quality. I wish that I could afford to get my own made with my current supplier. Um, but the handcrafted nameplates that I sell are actually my original design. I'm very proud of them. Um, so I hope that eventually I can make like accessory size ones but it's so expensive to create my own molds. So we'll see. All right, so now we're ready to put these all together. Again, make sure you line up that accent panel very nicely. but we can make up with for that with our seam allowance. Okay, bye Ben. Just means I have an easier place to put this. Definitely gonna trim the zipper in case it was bothering you. Alright. Um, and my zipper tape is facing in towards the lining of this bag. which is just about how it normally goes with zipper pouches. Again, things are a little crooked. That is definitely not the pattern's fault. That is all me, because if I don't have a template for it, I'm not the cleanest cutter. 
So there's that. And we're gonna start in the lining with a little bit wider of a seam allowance. It's about 3 eighths of an inch. Um, so we're just doing a, a skosh wider. Back stitch, go forward, pull them together. And then as we get to the zipper tape, leave your needle in and pivot out. Back stitch. that seam allowance So this is kind of a preview into assembly line sewing. Helps get things done a lot faster, especially if you're working on a ton of things at once. seam allowance on this big bag because I'm so used to half inch seam allowances but it's okay Together, line them up, add two clips to keep that together. So now that I have all of my corners clipped together, well, almost, um, I can just run through and sew them really quickly. I'm gonna set my seam allowance to a 3.5. If you were using a vinyl on the exterior bottom portion, you would wanna use a little bit wider, but since this is waterproof canvas, one off, go 
to the next. more helpful if you had someone on the other side with a little pair of snips. <laughs> we'll just trim it away and hand it to you. Okay, so for this side, you can see how it's a little bit uneven. So I'm just going to slightly adjust my seam allowance. I'm gonna go from like a quarter of an inch up to a three of an inch to kind of straighten that out. And I'm just kind of going parallel or uh, pe perpendicular to that seam. All right, so, oh, I missed one completely. How did that happen? Now we can trim away all of our seam allowance. And time to birth them. Oh, I'm gonna trim this extra zipper. Okay, the medium so far is my absolute favorite size. Uh, this is definitely the most giftable I could see. I should say I could see it being the most giftable. Oh, so cute. All right, and then here is the large. This one should be fairly easy to birth. We've got a nice wide bottom. See the finished product? Push 
out the bottom corners. Normally, I would add little name tags in the lining, but these are for me. I know I made them. My mom would probably say, no, you gotta, you gotta put it in there. And when you die, it'll be worth hundreds of dollars. I'm like, oh, mom, you're so funny. Oh no, this one's so cute too. out that corner nicely. Can use a lighter. Really, Ben, is that how you feel? Oops. All right, you guys, so here they are all finished. I cannot decide which one is my favorite. They're all super cute. This, again, is with um, Woven Fuse and Decoville Light interfacing the outer portion. Hi, Ben. What do you think? What do you think? Can you pick a favorite? I can't. Oh, they're so, so cute. All right, time for the test. We're going to stick each one inside the other. They're so roomy. She fits. Boop. Oh, she fits. And there you go. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed making this pattern so, so much. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below and let me know if you'll be making it. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.